Imagine a time when our ancestors were not the dominant species on Earth, but merely hairy, bipedal apes struggling to survive in the harsh, unforgiving landscapes of prehistoric Africa. Less than two and a half million years ago, during the early Pleistocene epoch, a remarkable evolutionary event took place on the sun-baked savannas of East Africa. A group of ape-like hominids, their bodies covered in coarse hair and their gait upright yet awkward, began to exhibit behaviors that would forever change the course of life on this planet. Today we explore the world of Homo habilis, the first human species that walked the Earth. We'll uncover how these strange, ape-like ancestors lived their lives, tracing their evolution from earlier apes and examining their unique physical features. You'll discover the harsh environments they called home in prehistoric Africa, and ultimately, what led to their extinction. Join us on this journey into our ancestral origins and witness the pioneering role of Homo habilis in kickstarting humanity's remarkable evolutionary journey. But before we go any further, make sure you like this video and subscribe now, or this hairy centipede will crawl all over your face while you sleep tonight. This is the documentary of Homo habilis, the first of our kind, and the humble beginnings of humanity's extraordinary journey. Let's journey back millions of years to explore the fascinating world of Homo habilis, the pioneering species that marked humanity's first steps on the evolutionary trail. Imagine if you could transport one of these bizarre, ape-like ancestors two and a half million years into the future and have them stroll down a modern city street. Donning a suit, this hairy, bipedal creature would undoubtedly turn heads and elicit shock from onlookers. While later human species like Neanderthals or Denisovans might raise fewer eyebrows, Homo habilis was the true outlier, a primitive prototype paving the way for our own kind, Homo sapiens. These early humans lived much earlier, endemic to the sprawling plains and savannas of prehistoric Africa. Imagine an adult male Homo habilis, standing around five feet tall, a towering figure compared to modern humans. Yet his shaggy coat of hair and ape-like facial features would instantly betray his evolutionary roots. Inherited from their Australopithecus ancestors, Homo habilis still bore many simian traits like long, lanky arms, perfect for climbing and swinging through trees to evade predators. While they ventured into the bountiful grasslands in search of new food sources, these daring ape men constantly faced dangers from a myriad of wild animals. A quick escape back into the safety of the branches was often necessary for survival. Unlike their predominantly tree-dwelling forebears, Homo habilis spent most of their time walking upright on two legs. Their unique physiology even allowed them to break into sprints for extended periods, an impressive feat for that era. Longer legs than any previous ape facilitated their nomadic lifestyle, trekking vast distances across the African savannas in pursuit of sustenance in new territories. However, it was their distinctive faces that truly set Homo habilis apart from modern humans. Imagine encountering one on a city sidewalk. Their tiny, sloped foreheads, high-set eyes, and ape-like skull structure would be instantly recognizable. A flattened nose with flaring nostrils and a protruding mouth betrayed their simian ancestry, a stark contrast to the refined facial features we take for granted today. Yet despite their primitive appearance, Homo habilis marked a pivotal turning point in our evolutionary journey. Their story, from their arduous path to bipedalism to their ingenious survival tactics, set the stage for us to become the dominant species later on. As we explored in the previous section, Homo habilis, the first species in the genus Homo, evolved from a genus of bipedal, upright walking apes known as Australopithecus, or Southern Ape when translated to English. Australopithecus accentuated the ape-like features that were prominent in Homo habilis, most notably in their facial structure. Imagine an ape man with a hairier countenance, a mouth protruding even further forward than Homo habilis, and a brain case still smaller than their descendants highly adapted for an arboreal lifestyle. Australopithecus was the pioneering genus that first took to walking upright for extended periods, a trait that would become more pronounced as they evolved towards Homo habilis and their future kin. With each successive generation, these early apes focused increasingly on abandoning the trees, adapting entirely to a life on the ground. The most likely candidates for the Australopithecus species that led to the emergence of Homo habilis include the famous Australopithecus afarensis, represented by the renowned fossil Lucy, or the lesser-known Australopithecus sediba, which started to die out just under three million years ago. It was during this time that one branch of these species began to diverge, setting the stage for the evolution of our Homo habilis ancestors. For scientists, pinpointing the exact moment when the Australopithecus genus gave rise to the Homo lineage has been an immense challenge. 
Prior to the groundbreaking 1964 discovery of Homo habilis by the renowned team of Louis Leakey, Philip Tobias, and John Napier, it was widely assumed that the more advanced Homo erectus was the next step along the evolutionary path. However, erectus represented a much more dramatic transition from the Australopithecus genus, making it evident that a critical piece of the puzzle was missing, a transitional form that would bridge the gap between the two. The question of what precisely caused one of the Australopithecus species to evolve into the pioneering Homo habilis has been the subject of extensive debate and speculation over the years since their discovery. One plausible theory suggests that changes in food sources or the environments in which these apes lived may have played a pivotal role. Imagine a scenario where the dense forest that Australopithecus and its ancestors had relied upon for sustenance and shelter became increasingly sparse, perhaps due to shifts in climate or other environmental factors. Faced with dwindling arboreal habitats, these apes may have been forced to descend from the trees and adapt to a more terrestrial existence, favoring those individuals better suited for upright walking and life on the ground. Alternatively, some Australopithecus species may have adapted to exploit different food sources, adopting a more omnivorous diet that incorporated both plant matter and meat. In the vast, open savannas, such a dietary shift would have been more readily facilitated as hunting and scavenging opportunities were more abundant on the ground compared to the diminishing tree canopies. While we can only speculate based on the fossil record and comparative studies, advances in DNA analysis techniques have shed new light on the genetic relationships between modern humans and our ancient ancestors. By examining the traces of DNA preserved in ancient fossils, scientists have been able to reconstruct the intricate web of evolutionary connections, revealing the shared genetic heritage between Homo sapiens and species like Homo habilis and Australopithecus. Through this cutting-edge research, we can gain a deeper understanding of the molecular mechanisms that drove the evolutionary transitions from our ape-like ancestors to the first members of the Homo genus, and ultimately to our own species. The unraveling of these genetic mysteries not only illuminates our ancient origins, but also provides insights into the unique traits and adaptations that have shaped our biological and cultural diversity as a species. Although Homo habilis was officially introduced to the world as a new species in 1964, the first tantalizing clues of its existence were unearthed years earlier in the Olduvai Gorge, a renowned paleoanthropological site in Tanzania. Imagine the sense of awe and curiosity that must have gripped the archaeological team, led by the trailblazing couple, Mary and Louis Leakey from Britain, when they uncovered two fossilized teeth belonging to an adult ape-like creature bearing an uncanny resemblance to modern human dentition. This remarkable find was merely the first chapter in a story that would unfold over the coming years, as the Olduvai Gorge continued to yield an unprecedented wealth of fossils from this enigmatic new species. The following year, the discovery of a partial skeleton belonging to a young Homo habilis male further solidified the significance of this find, and successful expeditions to the site became commonplace. Today, our understanding of the anatomy and physiology of Homo habilis is derived from a diverse array of fossil evidence, including complete skulls, lower jaws, leg bones, foot bones, and several partially intact skeletons. Each fossilized remnant offers a window into the lives of these creatures, revealing how they adapted and interacted with the dynamic environments of the Pleistocene epoch. One of the most striking revelations from the study of Homo habilis fossils lies in the structure of their hands. The bones of the hand indicate that these ape men possess the ability to grip objects with precision, a trait that would have been crucial for the production and manipulation of basic stone tools. This manual dexterity was likely facilitated by the development of more advanced cognitive abilities in the brain, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of tool use and technological innovation. Furthermore, an analysis of their skeletal proportions tells a compelling story of their unique adaptations. While the length of their legs in relation to their arms suggests a creature well-suited for upright, bipedal locomotion, the retention of elongated arms and other arboreal features hints at a species still at home among the trees, a transitional form bridging the gap between their ape-like ancestors and the more terrestrial humanoids that would follow. This duality is further evidenced in the shape of their jaws and skulls, which bear closer resemblance to the robust, ape-like features of the Australopithecines than to the more gracile, modern human form. However, their teeth, while still retaining relatively long and sharp incisors akin to those of chimpanzees or gorillas, 
exhibit characteristics that foreshadow the dentition of animals more closely resembling Homo sapiens. Perhaps one of the most striking indicators of Homo habilis's evolutionary transition lies in their brain size. As the brain expanded, so too did the skull, with the average cranial capacity of these early humans measuring around 600 cubic centimeters, a significant increase compared to their ape-like predecessors. This enlargement caused the skull to bulge outward, adopting a more rounded shape that would become increasingly pronounced in later human species. Homo habilis is believed to have been one of the first prehistoric humans to use early stone tools, even before the more primitive Australopithecines. Our Homo ancestors took tool use to a new level that laid the foundations for machinery and technology. Homo habilis is most closely associated with the Oldowan stone tool industry, featuring simple sharp-edged tools used for tasks like skinning animals or breaking into tough carcasses. These Stone Age tools were made by striking one stone against another to chip off sharp flakes, a process that required a degree of intelligence unmatched by earlier human species. While lacking complex design, the Oldowan tools show our ancient ancestors understood basic tool-making concepts millions of years before modern humans evolved. Mary Leakey's famous archaeological discoveries at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania provided many examples of these primitive stone tools used by some of the earliest human species on Earth. Some evidence even suggests Homo habilis may have been the first prehistoric humans to construct basic shelters or windbreaks from planted stone circles, possibly the oldest known human architecture. Homo habilis is also speculated to have been among the first prehistoric human species to practice monogamy or pair bonding between males and females within their groups. These early human ancestors likely lived in troops of up to 80 individuals, with multiple males banding together to defend the group using intimidating screeches, arm-waving displays, and throwing sticks or stones at predators. The early Pleistocene savannas of Africa where Homo habilis lived were similar to modern grasslands in Tanzania, open grassy plains dotted with trees and cut through by rivers. However, these prehistoric human ancestors shared this untamed environment with other ancient human species like Homo ergaster, Homo erectus, and even the more primitive Paranthropus boise. To survive, Homo habilis had to scavenge meat from carcasses of antelopes, horses, and other prey killed by formidable prehistoric predators like saber-toothed cats, hunting hyenas, and crocodiles. Fossil evidence shows some unlucky Homo habilis individuals even fell victim to attacks from these fearsome prehistoric monsters. Now the big question, why did Homo habilis go extinct? It is challenging to provide a definitive explanation for the ultimate demise of this early human species. However, it is likely that numerous factors contributed to their downfall over the course of the Pleistocene epoch. One compelling theory proposed by Dr. Pascal Raia from the Università di Napoli Federico II in Italy and published in the journal One Earth in 2020 suggests that rapid climate change played a significant role. By employing an advanced form of past climate emulator, Raya and colleagues were able to track rainfall, temperature, and general climatic conditions across the Pliocene and Pleistocene epochs. Their results indicate that later Homo species were beginning to lose access to their climatic niches worldwide due to sharp and rapid shifts in the global climate. Consequently, the environments upon which these early humans relied began to disappear and their food sources dwindled. It is plausible that Homo habilis faced a similar predicament, although climate change may have been just one factor among many contributing to their extinction. It is crucial to remember that Homo habilis coexisted with three other Homo species during their time on Earth particularly Homo ergaster and Homo erectus, which were more intelligent than their comparatively primitive counterparts. Perhaps these handymen of the Stone Age were simply outcompeted by creatures better adapted to living, hunting, and thriving in social groups across the plains of Tanzania. Undoubtedly, the discovery of Homo habilis was a pivotal moment in our understanding of human evolution, revealing a creature that was unmistakably more advanced than the Australopithecines it succeeded, yet still too primitive to be considered a member of the later Homo species that would follow. It is perhaps unsurprising, then, that Homo habilis became a subject of controversy and debate among scientists, with some even questioning its existence as a distinct species, arguing that it was synonymous with the closely related Homo rudolfensis, a creature with which it shared the open plains of Tanzania. While their ancient beginnings were primitive compared to modern life, Homo habilis was the most intelligent creature of its time. 
As the forefathers of technology, their stone tool use and possible early architecture were revolutionary milestones that eventually led to the evolution of our own species, Homo sapiens. Don't underestimate the significance of these prehistoric human ancestors and Stone Age handymen. Thanks to them, we can explore human origins and learn about our evolutionary journey. That's why we would want you to stick with this channel for more informational videos about prehistoric humans and our evolutionary journey.